In 1912, Thomas Alva Edison had a time clock installed in his West Orange laboratories. Every morning, he punched in, just like everyone else. No human being can live long without work. The pleasure of idleness is one of the great superstitions of the world. As a cure for worrying, work is better than whiskey. Much better. And he usually worked longer than everyone else. To Edison, time was more precious than money. I always invent to obtain money to go on inventing. His inventing career spanned some 70 years. He was born in developing America. He died in 1931 in industrial America, a modern nation he helped to shape. He produced almost 1,100 patented inventions in electricity, chemistry, metallurgy, military defense, business machines, transportation, communications and entertainment, engineering and biology. Some of his inventions were less well known than others. He built the first working electric train in America, helped develop the first practical typewriter, early fluoroscopes and x-ray tubes. Fully half of Edison's patents were based on work he did at his laboratory and factory complex at West Orange, New Jersey. In fact, West Orange was Thomas Edison's working address for two-thirds of his career. The facility is now a National Historic Site, maintained by the National Park Service. The Edison imprint survives. It was a vivid imprint. Based on his immense confidence in the creative power of his mind to solve the seemingly insoluble and he was not afraid of failure. For every problem that the Lord has made, he has also made a solution. If you and I can't find the solution, then let's honestly admit that you and I are damn fools. But why blame it on the Lord? Edison recorded his lifelong search for solutions in almost 4,000 laboratory notebooks. More than three million pages of drawings, notes, and letters. As in the case of the phonograph, he would visualize his ideas in his mind, then sketch them on paper to guide his craftsmen in building prototype models. Edison drew these sketches for the glass blower who shaped the first incandescent light bulbs. Edison might have been an artist, but he chose to use the world as his canvas. When Thomas Edison was born, most Americans lived and worked on farms. Wood produced their heat. Whale oil lit their lamps. Horse and mule power carried them westward. In the south, slave power harvested cotton. The nation was being wired to talk by telegraph. On the day of Edison's birth, February 11, 1847, a New York City newspaper carried dispatches telegraphed from the state capital in Albany. But it still took 10 days to get the news from Europe. America was growing, open to new ideas, and investors were ready to bet on good ideas. Edison had ideas, ambition, and by his own description, monumental nerve. At age 14, he was hawking candy and newspapers to passengers on the daily train between Port Huron, Michigan, and Detroit. During layovers, he performed chemistry experiments in a baggage car lab he'd installed. He published a weekly paper aboard the train about gossip and events along the right-of-way. In his late teens, Edison was working in telegraph offices in Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Louisville, sending up to 45 words a minute, receiving at top speed in a fine hand, becoming one of the best telegraphers in the trade. Equipment was crude and unreliable. Edison had ideas about how to make the system better and faster. At 31, he had revolutionized telegraphy with inventions and improvements that doubled the amount of traffic a single wire could carry. And they increased traffic flow from 45 words a minute to 1,000. He had also created a sensation with his tinfoil phonograph and was close to unlocking the secrets of the incandescent bulb. By age 36, 
Edison had become a millionaire, a folk hero, a living legend. The press portrayed him as a wizard. People believed he could make or do anything. But there was nothing magic about it. You come across anything you don't thoroughly understand, you don't rest until you run it down. Most fellows try a few things and then quit. I never quit until I get what I'm after. And he had learned that team effort is a powerful way of getting work done. So is controlling where and how you work and who you work with. Early on, Edison became his own boss. In 1871, in Newark, New Jersey, he put over 150 men to work manufacturing the improved stock ticker that he'd invented. Information had become a valuable resource, and Edison built his business on moving that resource by electricity. When he was only 24, Edison's workers respected him so much that they were calling him the old man. In 1876, Edison moved his establishment to rural Menlo Park, New Jersey. He built a well-equipped research laboratory to develop his ideas. There were a library and office, an engine house, a glass blowing shed, a boarding house for his workers, room to store all the materials he needed. Menlo Park was isolated, but that made it a good place to work and to think. Edison built a machine shop to make whatever he sketched. Anyone who wanted him knew where they could find him. He referred to Menlo Park as his invention factory. Edison added trained engineers and scientists to his staff. He divided them into teams assigned to specific projects. At one point, he had more than 40 projects underway at Menlo Park at the same time. Under Edison, invention was being transformed from a freelance art into an organized industrial and scientific enterprise. It was at Menlo Park that Edison invented the phonograph and the electric light. But to make his incandescent bulb useful, he had to invent an entire industry the generators to produce the power, the power station systems for them, the insulated wiring and distribution grids, the meters to measure the power you used, the switches to turn it on and off, even the electric lighting fixtures. But Menlo Park itself was an Edison invention, no less important than all the others. It was the first modern industrial research and development lab team-based problem-solving, team-based technology. In 1887, and for the third time, he moved his invention factory, this time from Menlo Park to a valley of small farms at the foot of the Orange Mountains in West Orange, New Jersey. Edison needed still more room for his lucrative enterprises, his expanding range of activities and interests and he had found a suitable new home in the exclusive Llewellyn Park residential development near the new lab site. At Glenmont, his family would be close. At Glenmont, he would also find the solitude he needed away from daily affairs to meditate and to think. The man who doesn't make up his mind to cultivate the habit of thinking cannot make the most of himself. All progress, all success, springs from thinking. If there is one evil in the world today for which there is no excuse, it is the evil of stupidity. At the West Orange site, the center of Edison's world was his magnificent library. Here, as a businessman and administrator, he ran an amazingly wide-ranging empire of 30 companies, from making light bulbs and storage batteries to building cement, from children's furniture to home appliances. At West Orange, Edison played more than an inventor's role. Inventing something or having an idea was just the first step. He had to make it work, to manufacture it, to tell people about it, and then to get them to buy it. From his library, Edison presided over project teams of scientists, engineers, and craftsmen, and a force of more than 4,000 factory workers. Only steps away from the library, was his machine shop. 
There is no similar institution in existence. We do our own castings and forgings. We can build anything, from a lady's watch to a locomotive. The tinfoil phonograph Edison had invented back in Menlo Park had been treated as a curiosity at first. At West Orange, Edison improved it, transformed it from a mere novelty into a machine that people made a part of their homes. Recording became an art, an entertainment, an industry. I have invented a great many machines, but this is my baby. And I expect it to grow up and be a big fellow and support me in my old age. Edison took a personal hand in virtually every aspect of his phonograph business. A variation of the phonograph, the edaphone for handling dictation, helped bring efficiency into the office. What Edison had learned from the phonograph project, together with studies he made in photography and optics, inspired another idea at West Orange. George Eastman, founder of Eastman Kodak, invented the celluloid film Edison needed to make his idea work. Pictures that moved. Edison called his motion picture camera the kinetograph, and the means of viewing the moving images it took a kinetoscope. Edison also made the movies to go with his machines. One of the earliest, a record of a sneeze, lasts only a few seconds. Here it is, slowed down a bit. At West Orange, Edison built the first motion picture studio. It was such an ungainly looking structure when it was done, we called it the Black Mariah. Our studio was almost as amazing as the pictures we made in it. We arranged shutters that could be opened or closed with a pulley to obtain the greatest benefit from the light. Then, in order to make certain of as long a working day as possible, we swung the whole building on pivots so it could be turned to follow the course of the sun. It was a ghastly proposition especially when it began to turn like a ship in a gale. But we managed to make pictures there. Including the first boxing match to be staged for a camera in 1894. It starred heavyweight champion Jim Corbett. There were dancing girls and clowns, jugglers and comedians. There were some of the first films to be projected onto a screen. Among them, this one, daring for its day. And longer movies like this. It's among the earliest to tell a complete story. Edison, there were still other milestones at West Orange. He developed a revolutionary nickel iron storage battery. And using special molds and machinery, he developed a way to build a poured cement house in only six hours. Edison houses are still in use. For example, this home in Upper Montclair, New Jersey. Edison was working in chemistry and plant science to develop a plentiful supply of domestic rubber at the time of his death, at 84. How had Thomas Edison achieved so much? From telegraphy to the phonograph, from the electric light to motion pictures. The wide range of materials in his West Orange storeroom testifies to Edisonian thoroughness and persistence. He tested 3,000 materials to get his light filament. He had 10,000 experiments conducted to find the right materials for his storage battery. The experiments were carried out with characteristic attention to detail. 
with precision and planning. Negative results are just what I want. They're just as valuable to me as positive results. I can never find the thing that does the work best until I know everything that don't do it. It was against enormous odds, or perhaps because of them, that Edison prevailed. He'd been hard of hearing since childhood. He was virtually without formal education and essentially taught himself most of what he knew. Thomas Alva Edison became a testament to our possibilities, all of us. I have accomplished all that I promised. He made this a century of possibilities.